announcement to my role as chair. Uh, so um, I'm happy to present you the next uh, presenter, which is uh, Oksana Boichu and Mirella La Lazar. Is that right? Or no, probably it's completely wrong. I'm <laughs> saying yeah. your names, but completely. <laughs> but maybe you you you, you mentioned your name. You, you pronounce it uh, for sure. You pronounce it differently. But both come from the University of Bucharest. Roxandra um, is interested in political discourse, gender studies, and uh, questions of diaspora. Um, she has looked at. Um, <laughs> we have looked at uh, different blog, uh, blogs, uh, internet blogs, I, I suppose. Uh, uh, yes, she's blogging. Blogging, she's uh, interested in, in blogging and how language is specific in blogging. And Mirella has an uh, interest in discourse, analysis, and media discourse. Um, she is also interested in diaspora, uh, migration. migration, and the, the Roma. The, uh, yeah, the Roma. And, uh, Evaluation of journalism. Yeah. Yeah. All right, the floor is yours. So, um, exploring the ongoing debate uh, on the European culture and the identity building processes, uh, mainly substantiated by the hypothetical common European language. Uh, in the attempt at analyzing the construction and the negotiation of convergent or divergent meanings uh, at the intersection of uh, three discursive contexts. The first corresponds to the political approach uh, of the language policy in the documents of the European Union. The second, uh, the interpretation in some theories Critical discourse analysis, and the third uh, is an uh, online debate on debating Europe uh, platform uh, that maps the public's representations over the future of European Union uh, language, identity, culture, but uh, in uh, reference to uh, the position of uh, EU authorities. Uh, we start from uh, a definition of the language policy. Uh, and uh, we uh, adopt our study begins with uh, a synthesis of uh, the conceptualization of the language policies models. Um, the analyst's opinion is that there is an unequal uh, treatment of uh, languages in that sense that some of them appear to be more hegemonic than others, it's according to Krizanovsky and Bonak, uh, within the group of the most spoken uh, languages in the EU space. And uh, it is the case of the, of, uh, the English language as against German or French. Uh, for some authors, uh, multilingualism is translated as a trilingualism, uh, with uh, some documents, the recommendation 8, uh, 814 on, on modern languages uh, in Europe uh, of the European Council and other EU documents. Uh, the second model uh, envisaged in uh, the EU language policy uh, consists in establishing uh, one lingua franca as a language of the majority. Uh, the analysts consider that this model contradicts, in fact, uh, the European language policies uh, based on multilingualism and equality of languages. As a proof, uh, as a proof um, uh, in the white paper on the European communication policy uh, from 2006, it is stipulated uh, that renewed attention is being paid to implement citizens' right to communicate with the institution 
in their own language. So, uh, for the above mentioned uh, analysts, uh, the model of uh, language policies depends on uh, macro, the macro strategies of the EU, especially in terms of uh, economy and politics. In order to conceptualize uh, the multilingualism model, we borrowed an analysis of uh, Kuzanovsky and Bodak from 2011 on the evolution of the semantic fields of uh, this concept over a period going uh, between uh, 1997 and 2000, uh, during which uh, the multilingualism was tied to the adoption of uh, major documents of the EU and also to the, the creation of the Commission's uh, separate department portfolio on uh, multilingualism. And according to this uh, analysis, there are three stages. The first period uh, in which this lack of linguistic diversity is defined, which is very important in terms of uh, Europe's culture and civilization, uh, with an accent put on the traditional values related to the uh, EU identity construction. The second period is uh, linked to the adoption of key documents, such uh, as uh, this framework, uh, new framework, strategy on multilingualism, uh, and uh, to a policy relevant definition of multilingualism, uh, defined as uh, salient for the participation and the communication with the citizens. So the right of the citizens to speak in their national language when addressing the EU institutions stipulated by the EU documents uh, leads to a, a sort of a monolingual multilingualism. Um, the third period um, is uh, split in two parts, two stages, and uh, it's uh, viewed from uh, the perspective of the Lisbon strategy. Uh, and uh, the second part of this period is interesting because uh, a radical rethinking, as uh, the two authors mentioned, uh, rethinking of uh, this uh, multilingualism in the EU policies uh, is done. And uh, this goes beyond this economic and functional aspect. Uh, recognizing once again the identities and cultures represented in languages. And uh, this was initiated uh, by a sort of a public consultation on, on multilingualism, um, initiated by the European Commission in 2008. And uh, as such, most people opinionated that the linguistic diversity must go beyond the economic and fun functional aspect. And uh, uh, at that time, uh, the portfolio on multilingualism uh, under Leonard Orban was a separate one uh, within the Commission. So uh, our discourse is uh, that the research corpus uh, was uh, based on the, this platform, Debating Europe. And uh, I let uh, my colleague uh, to continue with uh, the analysis, we, we switch, yes, uh, the analysis in terms of uh, uh, representations of uh, the identity as part of uh, the culture. Existing on language, so uh, it is obvious that the problems of uh, a common European language are under research and under documented both at the official level, at the level of the European institutions, and it's a very sensitive matter at the level of the public opinion. In order to see, to, to balance the two points of view, uh, we uh, 
we wanted to to see how the debate on the on the EU language takes place on the forums on the online uh, space. So we chose a platform debating Europe as our corpus as a little quantitative and more qualitative analysis. This was analysis. Um, the home page motto of this uh, platform is the platform the forum lets you discuss your ideas, people's ideas, with Europe's leaders. We'll take your comments to policymakers and experts for their reactions. And this is uh, the, the Pragalant language, which is approached on uh, three debates under the following uh, head posts. Is a common European identity possible? It's a long uh, debate under this head. Uh, should Esperanto be the language of Europe? Should English be the only official language of the EU? Uh, we uh, selected uh, a length of time between uh, 2012 and 2014 uh, to monitor the comments of 92 readers on the first debate is a common European identity possible, where uh, there was uh, an important segment dealing with language, linguistic identity. So uh, we selected only that segment where they, uh, the, the readers, the users, uh, came up came up with qualitative uh, arguments or with their own definitions of a common European culture and common uh, European language. And the debate incentive, as it is uh, uh, practice of this platform, was an incentive, uh, the incentive was an interview not with an official, namely the commissioner for multilingualism at that time, Lona Forman is Romanian, by the way. And uh, in the, uh, the interview with this uh, EU official, uh, Lona Forman said that languages of different people living in the European Union should be defended so that we may offer this feeling of being really a European. Uh, within the context of the online uh, debate on how uh, are multiple identities possible coexist, uh, some of the commenters uh, had very interesting ideas. One of them, a slot of Tishia, when one takes a new identity, namely a European identity, one doesn't quite how the old ones. The identity of one's homeland or region or religion, etc. Or uh, another commenter, I would say I am a woman and a human at the same time, at the same level, there is no choice involved. I could add, I'm Australian and global citizen, it would change nothing. Uh, in terms of uh, language identity, of the language identity relation, uh, the users explicitly proposed as a common European uh, language either a natural language, English, French, uh, German, 14% uh, of the, comment, uh, the comments uh, were in favor of choosing for Europe a natural language of the existing. 42% of the commenters voted for an artificial common European language such as Esperanto. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, about uh, identity and language, one of the commenters said more than being a good basis for identity, a new identity inevitably makes an identifying language necessary. For Europe is unlikely to develop a strong identity without a clear symbolic act 
like the adoption of an equally everyone's language to level the playing field and herald a new era. Uh, the comments in favor of a common European language were strictly free, as I already said, a naturally existing English uh, a language. In this context, English was chosen only by 25% of those who were in favor of an already existing national language. Uh, an uh, existing uh, artificial language of construction such as Esperanto, was voted by 82 of the users. As far as English is concerned, supporters argued that it is a very e easy language to learn. That was uh, an important argument. <laughs> Although a better half natural instrument of verbal communication might be a clear, distinct Euro English, <laughs> distinct from natural English, a very much simplified language adjusted to the pragmatic use of course in EU space. Uh, most opinions, as uh, we saw, were in favor of adopting Esperanto as a common European language. The way for Europeans to develop a common identity is to learn Esperanto as a second language. Anyhow, this idea was present everywhere in all the comments that uh, that European language he adopted would be a second language. The first one will remain the national language. Anyhow, this is clear for all the commenters. So, uh, being a second language, Esperanto enables people, European citizens, to retain their loyalty to their mother countries and their mother it is only by using a language which is non-specific to any group that it is possible to show equal respect to all. 36% of the comments refer to common European identity and language as a resulting from a conscious and coherent project. So adopted top down uh, and then agreed upon by all the EU member states, 36 percent. Uh, and in this respect, there is an relation as to the actions to be taken at the national and transnational uh, levels by the people themselves, agreeing on the language and after the language was proposed by the official institutions, then 19% uh, of uh, the actions that people de that were debating envisaged were introduced by we should do that, we uh, mm, introduce in the school curricula the uh, European language, also have the media to support the new European language. So. They use the pronoun, we symbolizing the commenter's collective commitment to participate in this language project. Uh, but nevertheless, 9% of uh, the debaters on the forum were against a top down imposition, or it was clear because they um, proposed to participate in the process not to be passive in this uh, adoption of a common European language. They are against imposition. Uh, in a democracy, change has to be allowed to grow. Another uh, very common idea that the process of adopting the language is a natural one that takes time and the, the language will uh, be adopted in the future, not in the near future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Yes. We are at your disposal, please. Yes. Thank you very much. I find this very interesting place. I have so uh, additional, uh, additional questions. The first one, because I don't know about this platform, is it uh, only for uh, 
Romanians or for the every single or three? Uh, are these comments made by a uh, in English or in only in English? English. Okay. And the last question: uh, Can you consider, for example, age or um, gender identities of all these um, commentators, or for example, the virtual identity, or something like that? Thank you for this question. Uh, it's a platform uh, in a way instrumentalized by the European Parliament. And this could be a sort of biased uh, approach because people who enter on this platform want to participate in the, in the debate. That is clear. Uh, the language is English and sometimes um, I think there are also in the Slavic language and uh, yes, it was uh, Maybe more in with inverted commas and yes. only syntaxes. Yeah, that, that is the paradox that from we even refer to it. That look from Netherlands also some mm -hmm. yes, just to contrast the other uh, expression in English, saying look at my text, or even in Esperanto, some short texts. Uh, and uh, the third, uh, yes, they uh, give their names. So that is why they, they uh, the, the reason obvious fiction. Yeah, but uh, most of them, um, uh, uh, they, they give the name and you could uh, deduce uh, that is a Slavic name or uh, or they uh, name their nationality. Yes. Uh, Australian yeah. or declare, yes. Or, uh, so even Polish uh, or... Or debaters, a lady who was very active, but she was a lady. Uh, it led and a lot of Australian. Australian. Yeah. Oh. Then there were uh, sonored yeah. in the names. I even wrote an article on the names of the uh, 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 but not uh, on this corpus, on a different corpus. And you know the degree to which they are credible, but anyhow, they are varied in both feminine and uh, masculine. We haven't studied the percentage. And the sonority of the names, uh, they seem some they are Germanic, some are um, uh, Romance uh, language uh, uh, sonorities, such as <coughs> Spanish people, Spanish users, or French. So there is a, a very balanced uh, mixture. But that's the paradox. They some uh, some of them very few are in favor of English of adopting English because of the cultural background yeah. and nevertheless, and they even mentioned that, look, we are debating in English. It's a fact that it's easier to use what we have than to create something. They are in favor of a um, functional language, a neutral language, uh, so without true. the culture coming in, or incorporated in this language. So even if it's English, it will be a neutral English. Yes, without a Euro English. Yes. yes. Those English. in favor. So what is Euro English? <laughs> Our English? No, no, Euro English. Ah, what Euro English, English, English we can read. Yes, this is Euro jargon. Okay, no, but my question is I was surprised by the half percentage of people that voted for Esperanto. Now, was that an official motion or just a proposal? Yeah, an individual? Proposal. Oh, okay. Yes, it's not. And that was reject, rejected? Or? Oh, we don't know. That's a debate. Just, just a debate. debate. Yeah, yeah. A debate okay, that okay, continues okay. and see. is uh, constantly, you could see, starting from yeah, 2011 yeah. The, uh, and now going on. Because that would really sound funny as Colossal yes. being the official English. Yeah, language. yeah. <laughs> this was amazing for us. <laughs> Uh, I would like to ask, I do not know this website, but uh, there was a citation. Uh, yes, because I never, yes. I never saw it. Uh, we will take your propositions to the policy makers. Yes. I'm wondering are, how are they taking to the policy makers and whether there is any practical response or any. There is, there is. There was, a, in this case, in our corpus, uh, the whole debate 
People's Debates voted after an official interview with the then commissioner uh, on multilingualism. Leonard I'm asking whether there is a response back. Is that means the yes, dialogue uh, no. he made that if the, uh, policy, if the decision the policy makers, way. policy makers yes. interfere. Yes. yes, they interfere, but only in the beginning of the debate. There are two or no, three yes. selected yes. responses, uh, and then the, the European Commissioner, either it was uh, Orban or uh, Andrew Lavassiliou, um, uh, they they responded to some of uh, the, the ideas, but the no, ideas. Uh, a permanent but then, interaction. Yes, there no. is no permanent. Just some selected. And there is a moment that there is somebody who monitor. Uh, yes, is the anchor who moderates. There is a moderator who proposes some texts in the beginning from statements from official statements or interviews. So there is a filter, there is a moderator. That's why I say it's a bit the point of view of the official uh, authorities in the EU and hosted by the, the European Parliament. And people willing to, to yes. give their opinions, so they give their identity just because there they are debates that in both countries. Yes. During almost five years, years. They, yes. they continue this and year. The language, and the, the common European language is approached. So, yeah. I think there has been a solution to the problem, uh, and it might even happen very soon. Uh, all that has to happen is that the British withdraw from the EU, and then <laughs> English will be a neutral language because it's not one of the languages of the member states. When we had this discussion 30 years ago in Germany, it was at that time there were still quite a lot of people in favor of Esperanto. The numbers have come down extremely in Germany. Nobody talks about Esperanto anymore. But there was another language that was mentioned in those days. There was Latin. Did Latin yeah, come out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was mentioned by a few people. Yeah, yeah. yeah Latin. Uh, but uh, there are there were voices from other continents, China, for uh, they said it's difficult for us. It will be easier for the Latin people. So the Romance uh, uh, Latin area. Latin will be easier than English. Uh, so they don't know Latin. <laughs> <laughs> they said it will be difficult for. Are there any other other questions? Yes. I would like to ask you if you could have identified some people commenting as uh, being Esperantists, if people yes. declare they are Esperantists. Es yeah. But because as far as I know, uh, the people around Esperanto are very active in, in promoting yeah. it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So you could they are, they are. They are some uh, who uh, explained how they learned uh, in a few years uh, that it's it's uh, easy. Yeah. They are they are promoting. Yes, months later. There are just five grammar rules. So yeah, five, five grammar, grammar rules. rules. Say that and there are in a few that, months. That they wanted to promote. It's kind of it's um, propaganda from the yeah. 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 that mm -hmm. okay. that explains. Yeah, yeah. but a few people mm -hmm. uh, told us uh, who were really speakers. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Esperanto, but yeah. there were others who were in favor of Esperanto as a construct, as a neutral mm -hmm. construct. This was the idea. But others declared to be so uh, uh, the language split is from the culture attached to it. Interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.